Hi guys, spring is on its way if you haven't noticed. So um, this little section last year I tried planting some stuff in between the dogs, cats, and chickens. It just, it didn't work out. So over the winter this year we tarped it with that which is being left out to dry out, let the worms crawl off, all that stuff. Um, and planted some blackberry seed, uh, <laughs> blackberry canes. Uh, this is a triple crown variety. Picked them up at Royal King for about $12 a pot for a small one. There's some bigger ones, and I'm not sure the pricing on that. And prices might vary from store to store. These came from Lowe's, and these are Dianthus. Um, I'm really liking Dianthus, it seems, because um, last year I had some bought, and I thought, well, they're just, you know, they're just not going to make it or whatever. We'll just, you know, before I realized they're a perennial. And it lived like this in one of my tomato containers going to be composted down and grown tomatoes in um all winter long and it's green still and it wants to grow so i'm going to find a spot to plant that girl out but between each plant we got a one of the dianthus from lowe's and then down there is a raspberry cane which i wouldn't mind get, grabbing one more of those and this is a heritage variety and so I think I'm going to stick with those varieties here. And if I do pick up any more blackberries or raspberries, I'll probably try to find different varieties, see which ones grow better for me, which ones we like better, you know, all that stuff. Maybe they taste different too. Um, but I also picked up this beautiful songbird, bluebird columbine at Lowe's. I thought it was a pretty decent price, $8. It looked better, but you know, we had cold temperatures and stuff. And then I got some Ahuga chocolate chip, which I did try to grow down here. It's a flowering um, ground cover that the honeybees will like. Speaking of which, I said in the last video how I, sorry about that, that was weird. I didn't mean to hit the pause button. Anyway, I wanted to talk about the honeybee swarm trap where we got it and stuff since spring is coming. Hi, Misty. And we took the halter off of Mary after we had the turnout blanket on and she refuses to be caught. So I'm waiting on <laughs> extra hands to help me get this horse caught. I've <laughs> done everything you could probably suggest to catch this horse besides having helping hands. So that's why her turnout blanket's still on and we think we're probably just gonna sell her. She's a... Uh, yeah, see, she's kind of stressful. But what we notice when we're dealing with the horses, she's the one that causes us to stress out a lot. And we just don't have stalls and round pens and stuff like that. And time and experience with this kind of behavior, honestly. So we'll just try to find a better fit for her. She's a beautiful horse and rides good, though. Anyway, so this tree line... The way I'm facing is south. So it's it's facing north on this tree line. And back here, a bunch of um, jewel weed grows. There's poison ivy growing, which honeybees get nectar from. I don't like them. I don't like poison ivy. I used to not care, and then I got old. Uh, so, and we do have some swarm commander in there and such. Interceptor. Oh yeah, we were, we were very pleased with how this product showed up at the house. So, fingers crossed we catch a swarm in there. <laughs> I've been leaving the screen door open on the camper to let some ventilation in here since I'm doing the deep litter method. But I have a broody hen. This is the one we call the one that used to not go to a coop. Because for a long time, she really wouldn't go to a coop. But she stayed alive. So she must have been doing something right. Anyway, she decides she wants to sit on eggs and I'm going to let her. Those in the top are fake eggs, by the way. Oh, the one who used to not go to a coop is a blue Australorp. And up here in this spot, last year I tried to plant some stuff that just didn't work out there. But the crocuses are there that I planted. I don't see any uh, anemones up yet. I don't know anything about anemones. I don't know if they're supposed to come up now or later. So I suppose I'm fixing to find out. <laughs> and I did plant a salvia over here. Um... But I don't see any signs of that plant left, so I'm going to choose some other perennial plants to put over here that'll um, 
bloom later on than the crocuses because the crocuses are a nice early um, delight to have. I'm really enjoying the crocuses. I'd like to get more in different colors. But they, I got yellow and whites up here. They're not all in bloom right now. I am not holding out much hope for my rehab cilantro. In fact, no, it's dead. And the indoor started Simpson Elite Lettuce and the Bloomsdale Longstanding Spinach. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they just, I don't know what happened. I don't know. So, yeah. Maybe next time I do this, which will probably be later on this year, trying to prepare for a fall harvest, a fall crop, whatever you want to call it. I'll probably try different soil or something to see if that works. Smaller pots, maybe they're staying wet too long. Um, I think that could be, an, it could be a lot of the case, actually, because not all of the seeds germinated in some of the cups. I don't know, but yeah, I think they're staying wet too long. I didn't mean that part to sound rambly. Anyway, my peas, they're not looking so good. They're not dried out, so that's not the issue. Um, they might bounce back. They might not. Oh, no, they're not going to bounce back. See this? See the rot around the base? That's no good. But I think I'm going to try to make it for these tomatoes because, look, now they're starting to push out true leaves, so once they get... A nice decent set of true leaves on look I even got more popping up I will transplant them and I'm gonna tra uh, bury them really deep the stems and I think they're going to be okay I've had some leggy tomatoes before turn out okay so all right so checking out my beautiful milk jugs all right I've got some more dianthus mix up here and the spooky ones in there if you haven't seen spooky I'll try to leave Oh, we got some germinating. A picture. But this is a mix. I decided that since I had so many flower seeds that I was trying to start, I was just going to mix the varieties together into one. So I've got all my dianthus in one, all my calendula in one, etc., etc. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. But everything up here looks great. Um, if you've seen a previous video about me with my winter so oh. Maybe it was just a Facebook post. I don't think I ever got around to making a YouTube video about it. So let me tell you now. Um, these seeds were kind of old. Um, I didn't realize I had to buy lettuce seeds like every year. And I'm pretty sure that's going to go, like, go the same with some herbs and stuff too. I mean, it doesn't hurt to try old seeds for sure. Because they just might. They just might germinate. Um, so that's another reason why I like the winter sowing method. It lets me know, hey, you need to buy these seeds. So I bought new broccoli and Brussels sprouts. And um, right now at Royal King, we're having a buy one, get one free sale. So I took advantage of the sale while I could and started some more of those seeds today. They're just one variety of each. I think it's like green sprouting and Long Island improved. But, you know, it's broccoli and it's Brussels sprouts. Um, yeah some bergamot we got all kinds of stuff just starting to sprout up over here oh well there might be a vero i don't think that's spinach though i don't think so that's an older seed that i was talking about this is cilantro and i do have cilantro popping up and those are older seeds as well so just because they're older doesn't mean don't try them the germination might not be as good but you might get something anyway see this one has one and that's yodfa and that's an older or older seeds tarragon those are newer seeds I've got one up so f well it looks like maybe a couple echinacea yarrow Colorado mix Ella campaign calendula mix uh, black corn flour German chamomile Blanket flower, which is Gallardia, if you don't know. I'm seeing one coming up through there so far. See it? And uh, what else do we have? I am not sure, but when whatever this is, it's love and life right now. Anyway, I'm excited about this little patch of loveliness here. And look at the spinach. See this? The winter sowing did a lot better of a job for whatever reason than my stuff started inside. And it was the same variety, came from the same packet, everything. I love my milk jugs. I'm telling you. 
And the new little seeds that I just started, I've got them up here on the porch. I picked up some of this furniture when uh, I went up north after my grandma passed. And I picked this up. I thought it looked great for storage. It's not in great condition by any means, but it's in, you know, storage. I wouldn't mind having something for storage out here in a workshop like this for, you know, seeds or whatever, setting plants on. That'd be cool. We'll see if it actually stays here. I have ideas to put in the office to get that organized, though. I did some more repotting today, and I have this uh, Cream Illusion Syngonium that I split up three ways because I have a healthy plant inside. And these are my giveaway plants to share with my friends and other plant loving people to swap plants with. So over here, if you remember, or if you didn't watch that video, I'll explain. Um, we decided to, we wanted to find a dedicated flower garden and a lot of flowers can be grown in shade, some of them in full sun. So we have a little bit of both here. Mainly it's for the honeybees, but let's be real. We like the beauty of it too. So <laughs> we were more than happy to do this. So along, so I, I don't know, just along the edges, for, I went this way with these bulbs down here. I think it's because I had extra bulbs. I didn't know where to put them. I went ahead and I mixed up all my bulbs and planted them out. So there's like anemone, crocus, which I don't see any crocus popping up down here. So I don't think I actually did get any in the ground here. Um, irises, alliums, the decorative alliums, not like onions or leeks or garlic. Um, what else is it? Tulips. And there's all kinds of varieties. Uh, I have an older video on that. I might, tr I can probably try to find and link in the description if you're interested. If not, we'll just wait for the surprise. <laughs> so I'm not sure what this one is. I'm new to starting bulbs in, in the ground. I used to not be a big bulb person because I thought they're kind of short-lived but aren't perennial flowers as well, most of them. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, just have just plant them and have different blooming periods. I've come to understand with understand that and come to terms with it. Um, and we did direct sow a bunch of seeds underneath the, the landscape fabric before we put landscape fabric over it over the winter. And I don't know. I don't see any germination or anything like that, but that doesn't mean anything yet. But that's also why I started the more flower seeds in the milk jugs because I wanted insurance policy if this didn't work out. So I'm glad I did because I don't see signs of germination of anything unless I'm just missing it. But it looks like maybe a couple blades of grass here and there. No, I don't know. I don't know. All of these flowers that I'm planting and sowing that I've chucked here, I have never grown before. So I really don't know what I'm looking for. And the pear trees are a nice full bloom. They really need trim down. They are super tall. All right, guys, spring is almost here. We're so close, so, so close. And thank you for stopping by and I love you. And so does Jesus. God bless.